This is StarCraft II History Part 19 and this one I'm going to be talking about the final participants that, are, that would get into BlizzCon 2013 and so in the last time I think I talked about Maru, Bomber, and Jadong and they'd all be in there and then you also have the first generation of champions Innovation and Sulky. Now Sulky was a bit of a closer deal just because he was in Korea, so it was much harder for him to get the necessary points. But he closes it out in uh, the Season 3 Finals in order to get there. Who else was there? And then you're going to have... I'm going to be skipping through a few of these because they're not as interesting to me. But Hero, if you want to know what he did in uh, 2014, just go check the SC2 history I did with Gemini and Ollie. And then along with Hero was Alive. And from... E from Europe, there was MMA, MC, and Duck Duck as like the winners of, as the bigger winners of that region, and then also MVP was here as well, but he had basically fallen off and would become a non-factor. Like I said, he's he'd he's already basically out. Like the uh, five slip discs basically took him out finally, after like a an year and a half. And the last guys I want to talk about uh, from the WCS EU region. Oh, I guess there's also Bomber. Um, did I talk about him? Yeah, I talked about him. Last guys you want to talk about might be Polt and Naniwa. But as for the two of them, I will save Polt for later. I will say Polt basically has a transformation in thought once he goes to WCS NA. And it's not like he lives there. I think he lives most majority of the time in Korea, at least during this period. But what I mean by a change in thought is Polt comes to the realization that he is completely outdated, very similar to Bomber, where like when, I, when I talked about Bomber's victory last time, I said it wasn't because he was mechanically the best as he was in his prime, so to speak. It was because he was more intelligent, because he was using a lot of his experience, and with his experience came a bunch of archaic builds that some people didn't know how to deal with. And so he always had a shot, a plan to throw somebody off their game and take them out that way with Pult. He basically becomes Sun Tzu, or he becomes Fabian, or he becomes like one of those types of generals, the ones that refuse to engage. And so what he does is he goes for like this pure guerrilla warfare style that's incredibly entertaining to watch. Because basically, the entire point of Polt playing that style is because he's mechanically outmatched by almost everybody he ends up playing against. And he becomes very... he, he basically gets a lot... A lot of victories in WCS NA against pretty good opponents, not the best. Uh, sometimes they were the best. I think he got a few against Tasia, but at least in 2013 he won two of them, and then he also won the MLG Spring Championship. Let me check real fast, I'll, and I'll run through the guys he beat down basically. So in <clears throat> in WCS NA season two, Pult basically nobody that interesting in the group stages. Um, I guess if you want, you can talk about Jim and Alicia. Alicia was decent. Jim was um, a Chinese Protoss. And I guess I'll talk a little about Jim because he's not going to get his own video. But basically, this guy has like a crazy upset of the century near the end of 2015. Where he beats both Life and Tasia in a group stage. And I am it's probably one of the biggest upsets in StarCraft 2 history. And him as a player, he was a guy who played StarCraft 2 from China, so he had ridiculous ping. I think it was like 200 to 300. So he created this uh, Colossus Phoenix style specifically so he didn't have to micro. And I worked out for him for a little bit before I got um, figured out and then beaten. But he was decent overall. And then as for the rest of the playoffs, he beats, Pult beats Oz. All right, Tasia, very good, 3-2. And Jadong, also a very good player. Like I said, probably the second best Zerg of that year. Beats him 4-0 though. And as we remember, Bomber also beats uh, Jadong pretty hard in WCS Season 2 Finals. And then in Season 3, Pult makes it to the top again. Let's see here. Beats Sage and Revival, I believe, to make it out. Oh, no, no. He had a forfeit win against Hyun, and then he beat Revival. That's right. And then in the next stage, he beats... Was it Hawk? No, it was Buell and P Apocalypse. Uh, Buell, you're going to find out very soon in the... Uh, not very soon, but like t one, 
two years from that point, he's going to become one of the most important players in the world. But at this point, Beal was a player who, I believe he was still on IM at that point. Or he might have been on Fnatic, but basically he moved to WCS NA, and then he plays there for a long time. And people kind of underrate Beal, because I always thought Beal was pretty good, and then he kind of proves it once he finally goes back to Korea and really start and really starts making a claim for Kong Hood. So, after that, he... Pult's run here isn't that as great as WCS Season 2 because this one he beats Hart, Oz, and then he beats Buell, gives Buell his first runner up. So I guess his Kong Hood starts here in a way. And then the final championship Pult wins during this era is the MLG Spring Championship. And this actually is a very good uh, tournament overall. You can go through the list. I think Sue was playing here. Uh, Hero, this is one of the Hero's better tournaments. Hyun was here. Naniwa was here. Jadong, Deer. And I believe uh, QXC. This is actually also QXC's last good run. And I think QXC actually did something crazy. Like He almost eliminated Deer very early on in uh, Best of 3 series. So that was actually... Even though like he doesn't place very far, he's this is probably... Uh, the peak of his skills, so to speak. As and then Huck also makes it manages to get to like losers round seven, loses to stats narrowly. Was it narrowly? It's been too long. I can't remember the games, but he loses two one. Naniwa has a pretty great run here. I think he gets to um top four and then he meets Pult and loses to Pult. And Pult is always going to be a thorn in Naniwa's side, so to speak. Uh, and I'll talk about that later when we get to uh Naniwa in twenty 20- uh, 14, which is basically the end of his career, because these guys have a bit of a history with each other. So basically, Pult beats Naniwa, Pult beats Deer, Pult, Pult beats Naniwa again in an extended series. Naniwa beats Deer, and then Pult and Hyun play it out in the finals, and then Pult beats Hyun three to two. Overall, very good, uh, very good victory, and it certainly puts Pult, Pult in the conversation of top five Terrans at the time. And it's this is actually one of the problems with WCS NA. Um, not WCSNA, but WCS in general is it's very hard to rank these players as they split apart. So, for instance, Innovation and Flash, yeah, you could probably rank them head to head just because they have very similar playing styles. But Pult is his own different beast, Tasia is his own different beast, Bomber is his own different beast. And actually, Bomber does play in Korea, so it's much easier to rank him. But like the other two, it's not, it's much harder because you're, they're playing against completely different fields. Especially in Pult's case, because Pult, Pult's style is so specific to him that I think if he had played in Korea, like not, like not maybe not maybe played in Korea because there is a definite edge in the fact that the Koreans didn't get to play him as much, so they don't really understand how his style works. But if he had gotten to play more more of these Koreans in international tournaments, I think he could have, he could have upset and beaten a lot of them because his style was so specific and so hard to deal with if you didn't know it was coming for a lot of the players. And then, obviously, Teja straight up does beat all, up all the Koreans when he meets them in international tournaments, so not too hard to rank him, right? So, yeah, Pult is... Because of, like, basically Pult's incredible victories, like, he gets two of the uh, WCS NA titles, he gets this spring championship, he gets this nickname, both ironically and both seriously, as Captain America. And... It's hard exactly to say how much people loved him because he was he was beloved. It, he was he, he was like one of the few players to have uh, completely flipped over his rep because if you remember in the early parts of StarCraft Two, I talked about how he was this hated villain, the guy who shit talked Jinro, called Jinro out for being bad, and then later he eliminates MMA in that super tournament when MMA was the hyped chosen one. And now he, but then he flips it over once he like plays not uh, plays not Naniwa Stefano, and a bunch of uh, epic rivalry games in 2012, like specifically the Lone Star clashes, but also the MLG I believe. And so he gets this kind of rep, he gets this kind of incredible uh, rep, and he's also one of the only guys to have had some kind of success against Brutal and Fester as a Terran player during the Brutal and Fester era. And so when he go, go, was, goes on to WCS NA. There's a certain respect for him, but nobody kind of real. It's hard for people to realize how good he actually is 
until you get to uh, the beginning of 2014 during the Blink era, where I think that's basically like Polt's best uh, achievement, more than more than his Super Tournament, more than uh, his 2013 year. I think that's probably his best achievement because he plays against the best Korean Protosses in the Blink era and then beats almost all of them down except for Hero. So it's pretty it's a he has a pretty interesting career and like in my original list i believe i put him in like my top five of greatest of all time uh players i'm not sure if he'd still hold up to that i'd have to redo it or look or look through it but definitely a player you have to think about when you're talking about the all-time great terrence specifically because he had such a stylistic approach and now the last player we're going to talk about uh, from the foreigner side is Naniwa. And like I said, I already pointed out Naniwa here. Naniwa was doing some incredible shit back there. He was he beat Deer, and this is before Deer is recognized as the double wild rotor he's about to become. So nope, everybody like talks shit about um Deer not being that good or not or not or being a, like a faceless Korean at that point, but he was legit and he was about to break out in a fucking crazy way. And as for Naniwa, Naniwa is a player, like, it's strange because there's a lot of weird things about him, but I'll go ahead and say I think his weakest uh, matchup was PvP, and that was, that always kind of plagued him when he went to WCS Europe, specifically, like, I think, like, Duck Duck kind of ruined him in the early parts. And Despite that, he ends up being the only foreigner to make it to this BlizzCon, and he does it the hard way. He doesn't get, like, the uh, free points that the current iteration does. Basically, he has to travel around. He gets second at Stockholm. He gets top four at MLG Spring, and then he makes a final run at ESL New York, and it's a very good run, actually. Let's see here. He beats Hack, and... He beats Hack twice, and Hack is a Startail Terran who was uh, middle of the pack... In Korea, which is actually good at this time, like I said, basically double the fucking uh, player pool. So hack being like hack being like mid tier there would probably make him like a regular round of eight or maybe even a round of four player now, at least. So he's that's kind of a way you can look at it. He certainly uh, certainly is hack was a certainly a, a stylistic player himself. Ninety one was able to take him out. Ninety one then beat San. San was. On the on the rise on the ascendancy, he was a pretty good uh, Protoss player at that point. Definitely top ten, and then it's arguable as to where he would place there. He beats Hyun, and Hyun was, uh, like I said, one of the better Zergs of this year. Even though he doesn't play in Korea very much, I'd still put him in the top five ish Zerg period. Though I should also point out, like basically Zerg is a race up to this point that where it's very hard for it's very hard to differentiate. Behind, be, beyond like the top one, two, or three Zergs. So, for instance, in 2011, you basically have Nest T as the best. Then it kind of drops off from there. Then you have Dongregu, Linok, Nest T. Then it drops off from there. And then later, you have the Brutal Infestor era, which I don't count. After that, you have Sulky, Jadong, then dramatic drop off to like Sol, and then maybe Solar's. Um, was Solar relevant yet? No, so I think Solar would be relevant the year after this or to become like a consistent top three Zerg. But basically, there's very few Zergs. It's different from like the Terran or Proto uh, Protoss race where top five is generally ha uh, tightly contested. Whereas like the only, there's only ever like one alive at any point up until the later parts of Heart of the Storm for uh, all-time great Zergs. And then Naughty One plays Life Life does some weird shit, basically. And if... Uh, yeah, basically, that's the way I'd put it. He does some weird shit. It feels like he's not taking it that seriously. And then when Naniwa starts to show he can actually start beating Life, Life start, starts to get real serious, and then Life wins 4-2. But that's enough. That's at least enough for Naniwa to get into a... Let me... I believe he gets in a straight-up tie-break situation with... Revival from and he Revival was a Zerg player playing in WCSNA. He beats Revival and makes it to BlizzCon. So it's a pretty fucking incredible like run for Naniwa. And it's one of the reasons why Naniwa is rightly touted as one of the all-time great uh foreigner players, arguably the second or best 
400 player to have ever touch the game because this is such a hard era and it's not like he was getting WCS EU points he was actually going the harder route and going to these international tournaments where the or in my opinion the talent pool was much harder and it's not even like the guys he was losing were bad like you'd see very soon Duck Duck would kind of ruin Innovation's day so so there's that and the final player we have to talk about is Deer and Deer is a guy I mentioned earlier in MLG Spring Championship he played a little bit there and now he goes and does the double world road and GSL season three he makes uh he makes the world road and I had Al Gulak I think or it might have been somebody else so basically I had somebody run the percentages and before the GSL his GSL victory like before the GSL ran the 32 group stages his percentage chance to win was somewhere around uh, I mean percentage chance to qualify but somewhere around like 1.28% or something really, really low like that. And so Deer is able to get out of the group stages. I looked through them. Nothing really stood out to me. And then his playoffs, there was Trap. He beats Trap. And Trap is a pretty good Protoss. Very smart. But in general, I think there's like a ceiling to his skill. And so that's about where Trap should usually fall out. He beats Maru in the semifinals. And this is an incredible series. Basically... I thought that I thought Dier Maru was gonna define the. I was hope actually I was I didn't think it was I was hoping it was going to define the rest of StarCraft Two at least for the next year because the way they played against each other it was so electrifying so fun basically Maru was going all the fu- fucking out all the way out with his uh, micro with his multitasking and Dier was always just barely holding on every single time counterattacking and so the two of them had very fun games but. But basically, uh, Deer beats Maru here, and then Deer plays Sue, and in Sue's first ever GSL finals, and Sue of course loses. Now, it's hard to say whether or not the Kong lived in Sue at that point, or whether it be, was he always destined to be second, or what did he did losing so many times make him inevitably become a Kong? It's hard to say. At least for this one, you can kind of say it's fine to lose to Deer because right after this, there's WCS Season 3 Finals. And then Deer makes another run there and wins the entire thing because he has to win this one also to get into BlizzCon. He beats Vortex, he beats Hero, MC, beats Maru again, which is another great series, and then he beats Sulky in the finals. So, you have to say, Deer was fucking legit at that point. Peaked like hell, but and never reached that peak ever again, in my opinion. And he becomes like the he becomes one of the last players to get to the BlizzCon finals. And as for the BlizzCon finals, that's its own little uh, that'll be its own little segment because there's a lot of weird things that kind of goes on that doesn't happen again for the rest of the BlizzCons. So that's it for this one. I'll see you guys later.